This video shows the foundation of my garden railway. I have no videos of the actual construction, so I will show the current state slightly less than one year after it was built and some photos I took during the construction. I wanted a loop in the backyard raised about waist height on solid foundation. The idea was to use hollow concrete blocks which were backfilled with earth, embankments or rockery except the station areas. Four gaps were left in for bridges and a gate to access the inside of the layout. I used 3 meter radius curves in case I ever own a live steam engine in the future and also I had the space to do so. The view of my layout from ground level. With the station at the back leading to a large viaduct in the far side of the layout, coming along the fence and turning back alongside the patio, crossing a gate and two bridges returning the station in a big circle. This is the place of the gate providing access to the inside of the layout. I'm planning to put a gate here as high as the foundation and the track to run on top of the gate. The track continues in a 90 degree right curve. Um, there is a small bridge or culvert in the grass and the viaduct in another 90 degree right curve. This is the small bridge in the grass. There is a bit of straight track section between the viaduct and the station. The station area is roughly 7 meters long, giving over 5 meters of usable length for the trains. The view of the station entry. Turnouts have been removed to install the wiring for the live frog. Two storage tracks start with the right turnout, the main track continuing straight and another track will start with the left turnout further up. I'm not planning to add any additional siding at the moment. The space between the second and the third track will be wider to accommodate the passenger platform. The first track hasn't been laid yet. This is the electrical connection for the station and the entire layout. The cable duct coming from the ground runs to the basement where I have mains power for the railway on its own circuit breaker. The red ducts run uh, to either end of the station to provide power to the main line, while the white ducts come up in between the tracks on the top. Those are to supply power to the platform lights and other accessories. The track converges under the apple tree on the other end of the station and continues in a long 160 degree curve with a small bridge in the middle. The curve has a one and a half meter long straight gap left for the curved court truss bridge I have designed already, but it needs to be made. After the gap there is a 10-15 degree curve in the layout, um, so it becomes parallel with the patio. This is a rockery section with yet another bridge in the middle. This bridge is actually ready, except that it is not weatherproof and not painted. It is cut from mild steel, so it needs to be primed to protect from the elements. The concrete blocks also need a bit of trimming, as the gap is a few millimeters too tight. This is my first bridge design, a straight plate girder with a walkways on the top to make it look less US style. This is how the garden looked before the construction started. This is a panorama of the trench dug for the concrete foundation. As far as I can remember, uh, that was about 20 cm deep concrete base reinforced with some steel bars onto which three or four layers of concrete blocks were placed which also got filled with concrete. The station area is basically two, two sides running parallel to each other. 
the area in between will filled with hardcore, uh, which was recovered for the foundation of the old house, and then it was topped with dirt. Finally, there was a wire mesh placed on top and the a thin concrete poured um, to provide a finish. I did not have the exact measurements of the track in the station, so the cable ducts were placed sort of randomly and in many cases not the best um, placement for the tracks and the accessories is going to power. In another part of the layout is still the original trench. The yellow pipe is for future cabling to go under the layout. All these pipes are located in places where the wall got black backfilled with dirt, so it's unlikely that I'm ever going to use them again. The first two layers of block go in. The garden looks fat, flat, but there is about 30 cm of difference in height. Place of the future viaduct. The upright blocks are only placed there for rough measurements for the arches. As you can see, the base foundation goes all the way um, under the track, even um, in places where the bridges and the gate will go. This is the place for the one and a half meter long truss bridge. The darker pile of dirt in the middle is topsoil which was spread across the garden. It added another 10 centimeters of the, to the current level. This is one of the three small bridges or culverts. I asked the builders to leave out a block in the top row. I cut a strip of plastic salvage from a commercial sign. I bent it into shape of the bridge. Large, nail was, large nails were hammered into the one-day one concrete um, uh, in the layer below. I found two laminated MDF shelving panels that just spanned the gap. Everything was held in place by three clamps. After this, all I had to do is to fill up the cavity with concrete. It turned out to be quite nice. I removed the clamps after one day, the side panels fell off and I was able to get the plastic strip out by bending it into the opening. As you can see, the top row of blocks got a few centimeters of concrete cap, which evened out any high difference in the brickwork. The station area also received the concrete top. And this is the view of the finished foundation. Probably after a month, the grass was out and most of the brickwork was hidden under the back backfill. Erecting the viaduct also started in the background. I started casting the arches at the same time as the foundation work. Rockery also looks nice. Could have been a little bit higher to come to the same, same level as the track, but the vegetation will fill in the gap in a few years. I started laying the track. This is the first time I'm using flexit track, so I had to practice a lot. The track inspection started immediately. I'm planning to do another video on track laying in the future. In retrospect, I don't re regret making the layout this way. Leaving one meter between the track and the fence also makes it easy to go around it and access the areas which are black backfilled from the other side. It also gives the possibility to add a second track if I choose to in the future. I could have paid a little bit more attention to wiring. Ducts are only buried in the station area, the rest of the track has nothing. I also did not think about how the layout can extend in the future. This is quite a solid base. It will be difficult to cut opening for crossing track in the future. Also, since it is almost up to the fence, not likely that I can add much track on the outside. But I will have to deal with it as and when it comes. For now, thanks for watching and see you in the next episode of Green Gauge Valley Railway.